Good afternoon, I'm Nick D for VIS. Welcome to episode one of Eurasia Rises, where we're going to be playing as the Republic of Komi, and we're going to be going the Eurasianist route. Because of the Komi politics, and it really does take a long time to get the Eurasianist in charge, because it requires a coup cycle, I will see you guys in media res like I did with Tabaritsky, and I will see you guys once the coup's about to fire, and I'll explain what we did. Okay, and we resume 12th, well, 31st of March, I was reading the hour time, it's about midday, uh, and we're about a day away from complete, we're about, like, a day away from completing the last of this focus, where then the coup cycle will start. We've basically been looting, we've been buying equipment from Zlepost and the black market. You can see it's been remarkably successful, probably the best I've had in a while. Uh, you can see this black market. We've been suppressing the left so much that the authoritarian socialist faction doesn't even exist. And the, like, the Democrats only exist in the liberal democracy. And the rightist bloc is so dominant that it's like, basically, I don't think we have to purge anyone. But let's get into it. We're about to enter the coup cycle into the unknown. And uh, let's get stuff. We've been raiding mostly Zukov and Tukhachevsky. Let's get new research facilities. You can see our social development's ticking up. Even our poverty's ticking up because of, of block houses. Well, it's actually ticking up by one. That's good. Violence of the Poles. We have received news of severe violence erupting in many of our polling locations. In total, three people have been killed and 19 have been wounded by paramilitary violence. This has started to discourage many other voters and some of our, of our polling places are even closing down. It is, not, it is not known if it was communist or fascist paramilitaries that carried out the attacks, and it very well could be both of them. If their goal was to scare voters, it definitely worked, although this does mean they are only scaring away our voters. Unfortunately, this not, does not bode well for our election process. And we can, we may see much less voting than we expected. Paramilitary threats combined with the fears of German bombers, even after all the efforts we took to keep polling places safe, have influenced many in their decision not to participate. An unacceptable violation of their rights. But reports of threatening riotous activity. More violence has begun to grow as more paramilitaries are taken to the street. We now have reports that riotous extremists are internally protesting our administration in the election. They. They are claiming we have illegally taken action against their movement and ideology by hurting them in the elections and stopping their supporters from voting. And now these militias have caused large amounts of violence and conflicts within the paramilitaries and police have begun, spi have begun to spiral out of control. The right is they're not declaring the election is rigged, even though the election is not... Uh, they're also declaring the election is rigged, even though the election is not yet over this... This, may, this has hurt the legitimacy of our elections, as it appears we are deliberately trying to keep the rightists out of power. Supporters of the right-wingers, right-winger parties, we are even calling for the resignation of our government. Our, poli our police are still trying to keep the violence confined to only limited areas, but it appears the paramilitaries will only continue to gain strength until the elections are over and the government secures power. When will it end? It's about to not end. It's about to get a lot worse. But let's change it to the Battle on Ice. Good song. You can see it wants us to do these focuses, but we're saving political power. Well, the few we have, the few political power we have. I don't know why we were losing so much, but it was just uh, taking focuses and decisions. I think. Well, you can see the Passionari, which is the Eurasianist faction, is 28 percent. I think, yeah, the OVRI might be a little. No, it's it's like, it's uh, it's a little less, but same percentage. Inauguration of President Kostin. The results are in, and it appears that Alexei Kostin has been elected as president. Was simply his dissatisfaction with status quo, or was it simply was it something about about Kostin personally that elevated him about above the other candidates? Either way, Kostin now stands before the National Assembly not as a deputy, but as the president of the republic. Uh, blah blah blah. The people have spoken, and we're about to get minority rule government because you could see. Not not many people. So yeah, minority rule. The results of the election are in, 
and our Democratic coalition has been declared the victors. However, there is not enough seats in the legislature to form a majority. The rightists have become a huge power the, after the election, saying they almost eclipsed the entire government. We have been forced into minority rule, stuck cooperating with the rightist extremists. This makes it much more difficult for us to actually move forward with our agenda. With large rightist opposition, we'll have to appease the far right if we want to get anything done. This will make it much more difficult to stabilize our government after the election turmoil. Some of the new legislators were even caught during the elections alongside paramilitaries and militias. The far right has gained considerable power. At least it wasn't a total loss, right? It's going to become a total loss. Because, yeah, you can see we have the grim pragmatist himself. Economic mastermind, you can pause and read this. But we're about to get him out of power. You can hear the battle on the battle on the ice in the background. Such a good song. Uh, but the coup cycle is about to begin. I should also say some other things. Uh, he went with Hydric, Mr. H. Turkey won in the Levant, uh, and also Steve made it here. We'll probably see his event soon, where he writes about across the tundra. But the critical point, it appears we have seriously underestimated how unpopular our administration is. Protests and riots are getting more violent as our police force cannot handle the growing number of people in the streets. There are even reports of far-right attacks on members of our coalition. Paramilitaries and militias from the far-right have even gotten into several armed conflicts with the police. With the chaos growing, we are beginning to suspect an incoming far-right fascist coup. There are reports of rightist party leaders planning a march on the legislature building and other government offices. There are also reports of soldiers disobeying orders and even joining the paramilitaries. We must act before the situation gets out of control. There's a large possibility of the disloyal parts of the military joining with militias to coup our leadership. We have to secure our government buildings if the rightists are planning to strike. It, may, it might be too late. Oh, man. Well, you can see a victory for democracy. We'll just take that for the free political power. But we're about to get cooed. Sabotage on the roads. The road to chaos. Yeah, you can see we're decaying by 1.25. It has to get to zero before the rightists take over. You can see left wing is so irrelevant that it just is irrelevant. Right wing, extremely threatening. Offer from the front, always of use. Extremely fragile democracy. The strength of the center is put to the test. I always try to leave the, those events up if you guys want to read it. We're a liberal democracy. Liberal democracy. Okay. Market liberals are the best ideology. Don't fight me. But we'll we'll just wait out now. We don't want to boost up Republican legitimacy. Yeah. But we're going to have rightists do more and more stuff. I'm going to leave the events up. Then I won't read them because it's going to be a lot coming through. The only event I'll read that, like, I'll, if there's a couple events like them sabotaging us, I won't read it. But if it's events like uh, the rightists taking over, after that I'll read everything. Because it's Eurasian time, boys. It's Eurasian time. And I'm glad you guys actually wanted a call to tradition and meaning unedited videos you can see I've been I've been able to raise two divisions by 18.5 a rightist coup should be coming in a second we change the song we find one of the good ones oh that's a good song not really right wing <laughs> But we're at 16, only like probably 10 days left before we we get overthrown. You can see stabilizing the regime, it has to go below zero before control totally shatters. We're saving our political power. We could purchase support equipment, we already have enough. We bought some from the black market. We only need like five anti-tank. But we're going to be good on guns and stuff and artillery and only thing we're lacking is anti-tank. Let's get ready. We're the government's about to be overthrown. I I'm glad. Like I Cyberpunk 1962. It just it, it like you guys weren't watching it, and I wasn't having fun with it. Nova Sibirsk, it's a good nation, but it's just not fun to make. Yeah, you can see, right of C's arm stockpile. That's going to pick up the pace. 
we stole our damn guns. So only like probably two days left. Or three days. <sighs> Let's get ready for the riotous to come in power. Then I, I, I'll upload this video tomorrow because at the time of this recording it's 9.43 p.m. I'm not going to upload this in like the middle of the night. But here comes the riotous. The government of the liberals have failed to keep in check. Look at that. Yeah. Here comes the coup. At any second now. Critical instability. Oh, we got a new division. That's good. How did we get anti tank? Eh, I guess it just went out. But the Passionari overthrow the government. The rising sh shocked the current government, beginning with attacks on police officers and loyal ci civilians. And so you have the car reports of violence streamed to the city halls are too quickly streamed to the city hall all too quickly as gunshots and screams become became louder, drawn close. The loyalists met the paramilitaries in the streets and alleys, but they were ambushed, trapped by a hail of fire from the windows above and from the cellars below. As they battled, so were civilians caught in the crossfire. Confusion increased as units were lost in the depths of the city. Others were directed to the wrong place by their superiors. The battle became too intense and men began to, began to desert, but the Pashinar pursued them even to the river where men attempted to surrender, but instead paid for their loyalty with their lives. Bodies floated down the waters, pleas rang throughout. Uh, bridges were taken, important roads were blocked, secured by patrols. The ways leading out the city were sealed as, as were those getting in. Attempts were made to break out for reinforcements or for escape, but they were crushed. Soon enough, it was all over. They swarmed the hall, intimidating the legislators. They opened today's session with guns and clubs. They arrested those they had on their list and adding to them anyone who resisted or thought was thought to have resisted. Shots were common, and the bodies streamed out as did those who lived to be sent away. When the old government dissolved, they made haste to see their constitution instituted. Then it was declared their triumph made law as cheerful as a cheerful Gunlov was sworn in as the leader of this new government. With the legitimization of their overthrow, the Pashinari were now in control of what of what once was the Republic. Our guide shall lead us through the Pashinari under Lev Gumilov takes control of the Republic. And you can see that. The Pashinari coup. You can see we have the state of Utsuyolsk flag. Uh, but let's do social sphere permeation. The Russian people at large do not understand Eurasianism. They deride us as esoterists or worse, leftists. For our humane and progressive understanding of our brother's ethnosis, our message must be propagated throughout the Republic so that people come to understand what it is we fight for and what our cause and why our cause is worthy for their of their support. This increases ultranationalism and decreases our legitimacy decay. But we're gonna yeah, you can see we're gonna console we're gonna we're gonna crack down on instability. But Gumilev has taken control. I'm going to read his bio, Diabolical Intellectual. Lev Nikolaevich Gumilev, and the only ch the only child of famous poets Anna and Kotomova and Nikolai Gumilev, spent most of his years being persecuted by the Soviet power, Soviet power for his unreliable ancestry and unorthodox scholarly views. In the years of his exile and wandering across Russia, he thoroughly studied history and ethnography, introducing the concept of passionarity, which postulates that the rise and fall of every historical ethnos is driven by the passionari. The few people change their environment and society to their vision, driving the history of their people forward. Instead of reducing his, his discovery to a merely academic matter, he saw that the salvation of Russia lies in the practical application of his theory, and fancied himself as the one who would bring the passionarity of the Russian super-ethnos to its maximum heat. Being rejected and ignored by Russian world Lord Skumilov found his supporters in Komi, among those Russians who felt to betrayed and disenfranchised by the Bolsheviks and Democrats alike. Gumilov's deep erudition, amiable personality, impeccable charisma, attracted almost every shade of the right wing in its soils under his banner, making him the patriarch of the Russian nationalists overnight. The Pashinari initially were considered as uh, underdog of the Komi politics. However, Gumilov proved himself not just an ardent Russian pa patriot and charming and slightly eccentric ideologue, but also as a ruthless manipulator who does not shun any means to achieve his goal, the right-wing extremism becoming a force that prevailed over every other political group in Komi. Though Gumilov emerged as the indisputable master of Osayolsk, his ultimate agenda remains unknown to anyone but his most chameleon, chameleonic and sometimes even opportunistic nature. Whether 
if he wishes to appeal to the whims of his nationalistic supporters or he decides to pursue his own dream of a Eurasian civilizational empire. The whole of Russia stands in waiting of a Scythian advance to bring the dying Western world down. So based. So fucking based. Do I have to say more? Eurasia rises. <laughs> Let's get here. We're going to raid them. Hopefully we can get some good political power. Uh, but social sphere permeation, then we'll do to secure the concept to decrease our legitimacy. K. Okay. Basically, the center isn't going to do shit. Or I don't even think we have to crack down on instability. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll go down this just so we can get legitimacy and stuff. Let's secure the concept next. These are all like five day focuses. But secure the concept. Before we embark on the journey towards Eurasia, we must ensure that our support base is secure. If we start building a top weak foundation, the entire structure will eventually topple. Eurasianists must be placed and keep the offices, propaganda distributed, and our civilian supporters protected. Eurasia. So based. I love Eurasia. Honestly. They're the underrated Pashinari unifier. They're, they're probably the most underrated. Or Shafarovich, you could probably say, too. It's underrated. But I, I, I love Eurasia. Feels good to be playing one of the quote unquote baddies. Not in that like baddie, like Instagram baddie, more like the evil one. Or are we, are we evil? I, I wouldn't like compared to Tabaritsky. No, compared to Sarah, no. Uh, compared to like the Democrats, probably not. Not not modern Democrats. Not modern Democrats. I probably should say that. Um. But let's highlight external threats. The enemies of the Pashinari are not self-reliant like we are. The Democrats enjoy support throughout the countryside, while the leftists are almost certainly receiving support from the West Russian Revolutionary Front. We can use this to our advantage by highlighting the threats that come from outside Utsayolsk. We can paint our cause as more legitimately na native to the Republic. Let's secure this concept. Bless me. Bless me in the name of Eurasia. Spoils the war. Let's crack down on stability. Do we have our Eurasianist generals? No. Probably wouldn't we secure support. But let's position here on the Order of St. George. Hopefully Vietka doesn't put up a massive fight. But spoils the war. That's good. We're going to get infantry equipment. We need all the guns we can get. Because the Eurasian military is going to need it. But uh, you guys could probably also notice, compared to the old version, Lev got a new portrait, more accurate to the time period. But let's do the guns of the Pashinari. We have one of the largest paramilitaries in the Republic. Let us put it to good use. We have the central government buildings in our hand, but there are still many important public buildings, transport hubs, warehouses, and infrastructure centers that lie in enemy hands. Let us send forth our brave Eurasian as soldiers to claim what is rightfully ours. I like the song. Well, you can see all our developments ticking up except for military. We'll improve that. But we'll do none may contest. You can see our uh, decay of powers. Yeah, it's like <laughs> .25. Because the center and left wing are not going to even threaten us. We're larger than pr their, their powers combined. And that's just the Pashinari. But we're going to do none may contest. Uh, a show of force is what we need. There are many citizens who still doubt the capabilities of repair militaries. Of course, we're not Bolsheviks who will simply mow down dissenters. Instead, we'll convince them of our might by launching decisive strikes against the foe and engaging them in open battle to prove our superiority. That's powerful. But tomorrow at 4 p.m., you guys are going to have a treat. Advancing under arms, uh, we need more soldiers. I'm not going to side with Sergei Tabaritsky. I don't want him in our organization. That's going to increase uh, decay by 0.5. Hmm. We'll pro we could probably just lower it. Yeah, we're going to lower it. So it's going to be 0.5. Not good, though. If I had my way, it'd be zero. Uh, but let's do a common cause next. Once we do this, <sighs> I 
Okay. The other rightists are all together too reactionary, or in Seraph's case, socialistic for a liking, but they're not without their redeeming qualities. Specifically, their loathing for leftists make them fanatically dedicated to the common cause of crushing the Republic left-wing bloc. We should appeal to our shared interests so that we can rally more forces to defenses of our new government. Let's scavenge for loot. We'll look at our big passionary. Compared to Tabaritsky, it's going to be very easy to get uh, Gumilov in power, because he's already in power. Stop the sanctions. Burgundian reinforcements. Hopefully we can get, like, Spear to win, because that would be funny, invading Spear as Eurasia. Even if, like, it would be even funnier if we had, like, liberal Spear, like, Gang of Four. Or even, even, like... Dang a spirit, toppling his empire. But Sergei Tabaritsky is a madman, gripped by delusions of grandeur, but he has his uses. As the only notable monarchist in the Republic, like-minded men flocked to his banner, along with many of the Orthodox Church's most fervent defenders. He thus has a large contingent of well-trained fanatical soldiers in his command. We, sh we would do well to court him if we can bring him under our influence. Perhaps we can sideline side him more easily later on. We're not going to bring him in. Uh, we do not deal with them, but Republican bandits raid city outskirts, for fortify everything. Eh, didn't even know they they would do that, cause they're so weak and uh, I, and I wouldn't see them doing that. But let's get the Eurasia plan next. We'll get recon reconciliation with the monarchists. We'll read that event. I should also say uh, they're going with Zukov, the People's Marshal. We got basic artillery. Uh, let's get this. But a part, of, part of playing Comey is you can start expanding very early. Originally, I thought it was the Aryan Brotherhood who had to do it, who could expand the first, but it's actually Comey, I think. If the player's in control. But let's do the Eurasia plan. We must remember that we were fighting for not Russia, but Eurasia. Our ambition is not to merely rebuild another stagnant, chauvinistic empire. We seek the construction of a new society. A new kind of global power. Eurasia will be a land that finds strength in its ethno-cultural diversity. United by a shared historical heritage. The Super Ethnos. That's a real concept that this dude came up with. But reconciliation with the monarchists. Uh, something's loading in. Okay, uh, reconciliation with the monarchists. Uh, Gumilov sent his office reviewing the letter in his hands. It was addressed to Sergei Tabaritsky, the leader of the Society for the Restoration of the Russian Empire. A minor right-wing faction, however, Tabaritsky also had his elite stormtroopers, fanatics who would gladly die for their leader in his cause. Tabaritsky was a fanatic in his loyalty to Tsar Alexei II, who he believed escaped execution by the Bolsheviks. This posed a number of problems for Gumla. Firstly, elect Tsar Alexei II was almost certainly dead, so Tabaritsky's mental health could be called into question. This meant he could be unreliable. Secondly, Gumla is not a monarchist. He doesn't care for Tsars, and he honestly doesn't just doesn't like Tabaritsky. In his letter, Gumla worked around the differences, of appealing to Tabaritsky's desire to see Russia's borders expanded to their peak under the empire. Some of these claims were natural, retaking Moscow, Ukraine, and Kazakhstan. Among others, Gumilov also made some more extravagant claims, including hinting at the possible <laughs> annexation of Alaska. Gumilov felt ridiculous proposing such a thing, but Tabaritsky seemed like the man, the kind of man who would make such extravagant claims. Was all, was all this really worth it? Tabaritsky possessed some very elite paramilitaries, but were they necessary in order to overthrow the Republic? Tabaritsky was also a strong orator with a decent support base, including the monarchists in, in Gumilov's coup. Gumilov's coup could not lead to a power struggle if he failed to keep them in check. Gumilov still held power in his hand. He could just tell his assistant to burn the thing and just do without Tabaritsky's monarchists. Alternatively, he could just send this ridiculous letter to Tabaritsky and hope he expect, accepted the offer. We're going to burn it. I don't, we're not dealing with them. I don't want to, uh, let's get cracked out of instability. But we're going to get the Eurasia plan, then we're going to get Comey belongs to the true passionarist. And so we can, we can still boost up Eurasia. But everything's coming together, guys. Black market equipment arrives. I forgot, I think we ordered it. Yeah, look at that. We're rolling, we're rolling pretty nicely today. We're positive in equipment, that's really good. The terror bombing hasn't even stopped, but this is uh, uh, anti-government riot. 
you guys can always pause and read that. It's just not worth it because we're about to stabilize the government. But let's get Comey belongs to the true passionarist. Rally, brothers, rally to the flag of Eurasia. This is for something greater than a dead empire or fallen union. This is for the future, for the ultimate manifestation of the super ethnos. Drive the enemy from our lands and raise high the black flag of Eurasia. That's powerful. Five days and we'll get that and we'll then stabilize the government in seven days after that. So what are these guys doing? Oh, I guess they just got stuck over there. But Eurasia's rising. I love Eurasia. So cool. I wish we had the, like, Eurasian, the modern day Eurasian flag instead of, like, it's, uh, we'll see it, like, when we form Eurasia, well, when we unite West Russia. Let's do this, and we'll be done with our folk, this small little focus tree. And we'll, we'll save this, 100 political power. Well, let's let's coup the let's ce cement our coup. Hmm, we could do no. We, I thought it said industrial investments. I only want to do industrial investments. I love industrial investments. It get elected prime minister of Japan. Status quo wins again. I actually haven't really looked at his focus tree. Uh, okay, conflict and the police. We'll get over it. Three days, relatively low, but doesn't really matter. And with this, we'll start jailing our political opponents. Or we could just kill them. I think we'll just kill them at this point. We don't deal with them. Oh, for a second, I thought it said democratic elements restore control. I was like, what? Uh, but yeah, you can see we have this now. Let's strengthen Passionaris' influence. But let's do this, the state security. With the end of the week, Republic and the statement of our new order under the combined banner of the Passionari, the time has come to begin the reclamation of Western Russia. The consolidation of Vasilyevsk under our new order thus will begin immediately until we are capable of shattering enemy, any enemy that dares move against us, be they internal and or external. Our foes are many, but our people are strong. And if all else fails, the arsenal be below Vasilyevsk can always be pressed into service for the true Russian state. That, that's implying chemical weapons, if you don't realize. I'll leave this song on, because it's so good. But time to deal with the opposition. Which just means jailing. We'll, we'll just jail them. Not really worth it to kill them. You have to spend five political power. But you can see the reformists are just... Uh, apparently just as strong as us, or just as influential. New nationalism. But refuge. It's never easy. Basically getting gunned down by a fascist paramilitary. Nice. Let's get the state secured, and then we'll get unle unearth the arsenals. Get all these guns. We need the, we need the boys to get on the field. Let's unearth the arsenals. Throughout our land, there lies vast arsenals of weaponry that have been buried in bunkers to protect them from German bombers. The arsenal beneath Utsayosk and its chemical stockpiles is the greatest example of this, but there exist many other such stockpiles. We must unearth these caches immediately and arm our forces with their contents. A well-armed force is critical for the expansion of our state and the impending reclamation of Russia. That's powerful. We'll probably get the... Op yeah, remnants of the opposition. Let's get to work. Uh, let's locate Suslev, Kostin, and let's see, Kostin and Zandov. Might as well just get Stalina too. Get the whole party. But you can see the tiny little OVRI here. Big Passionary. We'll we'll just imprison them. That's what we're gonna do. And yeah, we got a new set of generals. You can see some Tabaritsky generals here. We'll just get this dude. Feels weird playing with Tabarit Tabarite Tabaritsky generals. But their first target's gonna be the Order of St. George. Then we might go after Volagoda, might go after the West Russian Revolutionary Front. They're still doing all this. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna be ahead of everyone. Let's purchase infantry equipment. Actually, no. Let's save our political battle. 
We actually do only have 10 seconds left in the episode. So I'm Nick D4VIS. I'll see you guys next time. This is really, really fun. And I think something great's going to come out of this.